Hello, my beautiful life brides. And for those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. Y'all, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. I decided to read RuPaul's new book, House of Hidden Meanings, so you don't have to, because reading is what? Fundamental. And since I read the book, I decided that I'm going to give you a little book review, give you my thoughts on the book, and let you know what's up. And if you like this, maybe I'll read some other drag books and turn this into a series. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so let's get into this book. Hidden Meanings is a new book that came out by RuPaul just this year and honestly took me about seven hours in total to read. Depending on your speed, it might take you more or less than that. So it is a little bit of a time commitment. Now, the real question was, was it any good? Well, wait till the end. I will be giving you a rating out of five. First, I want to start off by saying that I was really intrigued by this book. I looked at the cover and the cover was so mesmerizing. It definitely gave you that idea that we were going to go deep with this book, that we were going to learn some stuff about RuPaul. The cover made it look like this was going to be a super sentimental book. I also looked at the reviews online and the reviews were pretty good. So I was excited to get into it. Now, I am not a queen who reads that much, so this was a little bit of a departure for me, but I was like, you know what? Content, no joking, me kind of not really. So I thought to myself, you know what? Let's give it a whirl, and worse comes to worse, we'll get some good content out of it, right? Everything looked good going into it. Chapter one, we started off rough. You can see that RuPaul was really trying to make that title of House of Hidden Meanings work. He was describing every little thing in the book in a lot of detail and a lot of detail that honestly didn't really matter, putting sort of notions on things to give them hidden meanings. This first chapter of the book really felt like it was written at the end and put at the beginning to really make the whole thing come together because this was not it. But once you power through the first chapter, it did get slightly better. So the book itself is actually a bunch of stories from RuPaul's childhood. They do feel like really random and put together. It's really hard to follow a cohesive storyline. One of the things that was really missing for me was dates and times because these stories come up and go, but you you don't actually know if a year has passed, a month has passed, a week has passed, and that sort of was like the troublesome for me. It was hard for me to follow. On top of it, RuPaul really put a lot of emphasis on himself. Yes, there are other people that come into his story and mark his life, but they are in there so short that you don't really get attached to these people. If he has a true relationship with these people, it doesn't feel deep in the book. Additionally, because these are sort of like random stories from his childhood, there is not a really great transition between these stories. He does try to thread them through to each other, bringing back searching like life lessons and hidden meanings into the next story. Honestly, it really feels like RuPaul wrote this book for RuPaul, not necessarily for an audience. It is a lot about him, his childhood, and these memories that he remembers. It really feels more like a diary rather than a book you want to read. Now, I don't read a lot of nonfiction books, so I don't know if this is how it's normally supposed to be done, but I did find this a little bit hard. I will give kudos because the stories aren't all glamorous. They aren't all blah, 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 boom. He does talk about the heartaches and where he comes from and all of the things that he's done in school in the past that got him to where he is today. I love that he didn't shy away from his actual past and sort of embraced it and talked about all of his like, you know, extracurricular activities and things like that and does get really personal with it. So that I found really nice because they kind of match the book. Unfortunately, I just feel like a lot of the stories weren't really that interesting. Yes, you find little pockets here and there, but it felt like someone's normal childhood, granted not necessarily a glamorous one, but someone's normal childhood. It didn't really feel like extra crazy over the top either, you know what I mean? Which I guess is kind of the point. Now I will say that the entire book is an extremely slow read. Aww. I would say that I was struggling to read through this for three fourths of the book. It was only around like chapter 10 where I really felt that it started to get really interesting. This book is mostly focused on his childhood and I do wish that it would focus more on the later years. For example, around chapter 10 is when we first get sort of introduced to Lady Bunny and Michelle Visage is like nowhere to be seen in this book at all. 
So if you are a drag race fan, it does not go into that era of RuPaul at all. It doesn't even talk about any of that. It really focuses on the earlier years. Now, I will say that there are a lot of references in the book that really show RuPaul's age. I'm reading it and I don't really know some of the references. Maybe I need sort of like a cultural lesson because it really felt like of its time of Ru what RuPaul specifically likes. So if you are into like old time televisions and you know your old school references, maybe you will enjoy this more than me. Personally, I did find a hard time connecting both from his analogies, which I didn't always get, but also just from his story, which didn't really relate to my story in any way, shape or form. The only character that you really do get connected to is obviously RuPaul himself. And towards the later end of the book is George, where RuPaul really talks fondly about George and their relationship together. And that was really touching. And I wish felt more like this later end of the section and not so much the beginning where it was a little bit cumbersome to get through. I also find that the relationship between George and Rue is very endearing and really gives Rue a nice platform to like both to see himself in, but also connect with the audience in a different way. This was really touching story and like I said, the most interesting part of the book. All in all, I did find this book a little bit of a slow read and really hard to get into. It's not a book that I would necessarily recommend. You really have to be a RuPaul fan to want to read this book, not necessarily a Drag Race fan. If you are a Drag Race fan, yeah, you will learn more about RuPaul, but it doesn't really cover much of that era and really doesn't give you a lot of insights into how Drag Race was made or anything like that. It really just doesn't talk about Drag Race, period. It really is the story of how RuPaul got his fame. Let's put it that way. That is what it is about. It is a really a coming of age story of RuPaul. All in all, I would say not my favorite and I would probably give it a 2.5, maybe a three stars out of five. If you're a reader, you might enjoy it, but if you're not a reader, very skippable. If anybody out there has read the book, I'd love to hear your opinions. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you liked this little book review and want me to review some other books, go ahead and leave a comment of the book that you want me to read and give a book review on, preferably some drag related books maybe. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.